Hey everybody, it's Dennis Wood here for yet another exciting video here in my shop. Um, maybe not the most exciting video, but this one is about something that I've been working on for probably 30 years, and that is living in the Northland where we live, where there's rust, uh, a lot of rust due to salt and uh, snow and that sort of thing, sand, uh, that's happening in the winter. Corrosion is always a big issue, and uh, this is a good example of a car. This is a 2018. This is a car we picked up for our daughter. This car is only six years old, has 42,000 kilometers on it, so somewhere around 26,000 miles. It's got a fair bit of corrosion. It's never been treated. The factory really doesn't do anything on any cars that I've ever seen. Um, they, they do some rocker guard and things like that, but pretty much every car I've seen, especially in the last decade or so, they rust real quick. Even just in the summer, there's rusting fasteners, there's all kinds of issues. If you've worked on a car, if you plan on keeping a car for a little while, and it's well worth taking the time to do this. So let's dip into what we're actually doing here. Now this vehicle had uh, what's called electronic rust protection, um, which is a bit of a joke. Some of the dealers are charging six, 700 or more to install one of these little modules. This one was under the hood and hooked to the battery. You can decide for yourself if these work as we go through the video, but I will tell you that if somebody wants to charge you anything, so if somebody wants to charge you five bucks for one of these electronic rust control modules on a car, I'd say don't waste your money. It's not even worth five bucks, don't bother. You can be the judge as we go through this vehicle as to whether this was working. This was uh, hooked up and uh, powered up. So you can, six year old car, 40,000 kilometers, you'll see there's some rust. So I wouldn't bother with one of these. Now, tools of the trade. I've used a lot of different products and corrosion control is a hot topic on, on the interwebs. Um, there's, you know, fluid film, wool wax, which are lanolin based products here in Canada. We see a lot of rust check and crown. Um, not going to really go into why I don't use those products anymore, but kind of boils down to with, with fluid film and wool wax, they do tend to swell up seals, especially lower doors, and they can um, require replacement of those. I, I'm a little nervous this is an EV. I wouldn't want to use anything that's uh, reacting with plastic, especially what you'll see there's high voltage looming and, and seals on connectors. So um, I would not use those products. I use a product called Noxidol, um, which has showed up in Toyota recalls, Isuzu recalls. I think there's some Honda recalls. And the manufacturers, if you kind of drill down into the technical service bulletins, they're applying products uh, in some cases from Noxidol. And Noxidol is a product that it is, is a wax. Um, it never really hardens completely. It has actually active ingredients that react with rust. So you can look at their, look up their MSDS and you see um, various ingredients that's part of their patent um, that actually react with rust. So the 701 uh, classic car three year test um, I've used, again, a lot of different products. I've tried Crown, I've tried Rust Check, I've tried uh, Mike Sanders Grease, which is a product you have to heat up. I actually have a wok with a drain in it to heat this um, wax to 80 degrees, real pain. And then you have to uh, apply it with a, a pressure unit like this. Speaking of which, tools of the trade, this is a fairly inexpensive uh, gun. Uh, it's pressurized with compressed air. One really nice thing about these is that they've got these uh, quick release tips. And this is one of my favorites, just a short nozzle for high volume application. But you've got other attachments here, like the wand, um, which gives you a lot of control. You can kind of get into channels and spaces and rotate. It's a pretty heavy duty piece. And then you'll see, you can, again, auto body shops usually carry these. There's a long wand that'll fit in. And this will allow you to go into say truck beds, that sort of thing. And then these things are super handy to run channels and we'll see and like you see, I use these a lot. They have a little 360 degree spray tip. Um, it's just got a, it's basically kind of laser cut in a oval. And uh, when you fire a product through this, it sprays in all, in, basically in three, 360 degrees. So it's nice to run channels in the car. Um, and again, I'm buying these in liter containers. You can buy these in aerosols. It's a lot more expensive. This is, I believe it's a liter. Um, this particular product is 700 and 300 it's solvent free. There's no fumes. Uh, that's one of the reasons I like to use it. Uh, the downside is it does take a few days. Uh, in summertime, you're talking three to five days for this product to set up. And in a perfect world, you'll apply this and you'll leave the car sitting um, for five days or so. 
which will reduce the risk of it, say, uh, of, you, of you losing some product when you're driving and say there's water washing, that sort of thing. One of the things I really love about this product is that unlike some products like Rust Check, for example, Rust Check will cost you $170, $180 a year Canadian to get done in a car, more on a truck. And they don't do, in my experience, they don't do a great job of applying. Um, they miss a lot of spots. They don't drop spares. They certainly don't drop under panels like we've done on this car, and we'll show you more of that. Uh, not many, many people do that. Unfortunately, in my mind, that is what's required. You have to basically, you know, you want to take off the fender liners um, and take the trays off underneath. So you can actually get to everything and do a good job of application. So we'll walk around the car and I'll show you that. Um, but I do like this product because it doesn't harden. It stays waxy. The 700 is a high creep product, so it's very runny. Uh, it's very good at getting into seams. So, um, you know, I do under the hood. Uh, in this case, it's an EV. I'll actually do some parts of the, the lower case, the aluminum bits. Um, I'm being very careful not to actually hit the high voltage cables, and we'll show you that. Also a suggestion, uh, disconnect the 12 volt battery. That way you're pretty sure, well, you're really sure that the high voltage cables are not gonna be active while you're under there. Um, you really do have to kind of know a little bit about what you're doing and, and not be poking metal things like this into high voltage. On this leaf, there's actually a disconnect inside the cabin. You can actually pull that too if you'd like. Um, I usually just disconnect the 12 volt battery and be mindful of the high voltage connections. We'll talk about that here. Um, this product does not react with plastic. It doesn't swell it, it doesn't damage it. Um, do I spray high voltage connections with it? No. Um, but you can certainly get everywhere around where the issues, and you'll see there's plenty of issues. The 700 is the high creep product. It's an amber color. The 300 is a product that's designed, it's heavier body. It's designed to go on the chassis underneath where you will get sand and rocks. Now, I've been using this product for four or five years now. Really like it. Um, started using it on my Volkswagen, my 1980, uh, 1990 Westphalia van. And I've been using it on all of our cars for about the last uh, five, around five years. It doesn't require reapplication every year. So you're paying, you know, 30 bucks or so a liter for this now. Um, and you might use about five or six of these and two of these to do a car like this. Um, so you can do the math there. You're probably around 200 bucks. It pays for itself in a year or two. Uh, the, the big thing though is care and application. Um, and if you're doing it yourself and you're willing to take some time, you can do a good job. It doesn't require reapplication uh, yearly. So you can um, just do a little touch up every year. And generally you'll find like behind the wheels where there's a lot of sand and salt and everything like sandblasting the car, there'll be a little touch up every year. So about once a year I put on maybe three, three to 400 milliliters or about a third of a liter, third of a quart if you're in the US. Um, I'll spray that on. And again, you can get this in aerosol. So if you do, you can just do some quick touch ups uh, with the aerosol if you like both products. A little more expensive to buy that way, but uh, it works. So let's kind of take a walk around the car and let's see what I've done here to take it apart and, uh, and treat it. Um, I have varied a little bit on the theme because Noxidil actually suggests that you hit up the car first with 700. It makes sense because the seams and the channels underneath, if you hit it with this first, it's a very high uh, creep product. So it will creep into the seams um, and then you can hit it with 300 to protect it. So I've kind of done things a little bit differently. I have some time. Uh, this car will probably be in the hoist, honestly, for about five days. Um, and uh, we've got a couple other vehicles so that my daughter can borrow one of ours. So it's not the easiest product on the first application just because it is a good idea to let it sit. But again, anything is better than nothing when it comes to um, rust prevention. And uh, I would also add that the care that you take in app app uh, applying the product, regardless of the product that you're using, is probably the most important thing. So we'll go over a few tips that I've learned over the years uh, doing these cars, and uh, hopefully you'll find it useful. Now you can see here, um, I've taken all the fender liners off, and I have taken off uh, these under panels, these under trays, there's actually five of them. Uh, so it does take a bit of time, probably took me about two hours, I've done it once, twice before. Um, and all you need for this product, or all you need for this project rather, is a 10 millimeter, wrench and a uh, clip remover. I'll show you those tools right now. All right, so what you can expect after you pull all these panels off is you can have a bunch of these clips. And these clips are pretty straightforward. 
you just basically pop this piece up and then the whole uh, clip will pop out. There's just a little expanding dealio on the back there. This tool here is what I use to do that. It's super handy. It's just a little uh, split, um, looks like a screwdriver basically with a angled end. And then you're gonna have some of these 10 millimeter bolts. The important thing to remember here is that the short bolts, uh, cause you're gonna have a pile of short ones are the ones that go under the battery. So we'll go under the car and have a look at that. All right, so we'll take a walk around the car and just look at a few bits. Like I was saying earlier, I hit the car with the uh, 700 product first, just to get these seams. You can even see rust. This, this area is normally all protected by the fender liner. And you can see there's already rust coming up in these seams. That's a little worse on the other side. It tends to be worse uh, sometimes on the driver's side because in the winter, um, you're gonna get salt basically from both sides. So if we walk around the car here, let's go look at the other side. You can see it's not too bad, but you're getting rust already. Again, this area is all already uh, or protected um, by the fender liner and you'll see a bit of rust starting up here. Um, but again, I just like to hit it with the 700 to creep into these seams before the 300 in this case. If we walk around, uh, we're just gonna walk around here through the magic of editing, we can cut this out. So walking up here to the back fender, you'll see areas, these areas down here will tend to rust out fairly quickly. Um, and they put some seam sealer here, which is actually um, will catch water in dirt. Same thing here, you can see seams. Uh, keep in mind, okay, this is a 2018 car with 40,000 kilometers, hasn't driven a ton, but you're already seeing you know, a fair bit of rust down here. This is where the, the underside will get blasted by the wheels. Not sure if you can see back up here, but in the bumper area, there's a fair bit of rust up there. Um, again, you can use the channel tools to run this channel right here. Let's see if I can get in here, right here. And uh, you run both of those with the channel and then, uh, or with the channel tool. And same thing, these obvious open will jump on the chair here and take a stroll underneath. See if I can angle this back a bit for you. As we roll our way down, not bad under here. This is fully protected normally. Uh, but these are areas, again, you're going to want to run all these channels with the 700. You can see some rust coming up here. This is actually um, the back of the battery pack up in this area. And there's a ridge here that was just full of sand. Um, now there's a steel case over it, so it's not actually the pack, it's some steel around it, which is a good thing. But again, um, definitely uh, you wanna hit this seam and that so that when material does sit there, it uh, doesn't uh, rust the steel case. See seam rust up here, here. You can see it creeping in around here, here, kind of everywhere. So that's why, and you can see perhaps a better view here. Um, you know, again, just probably from salt wash. This is all protected by an undercarriage, a little bit of seam rust there. And as we go underneath here, you'll see a fair bit kind of gets nasty down here. This whole area, you can see it's rusting. Rust here, this whole area. Again, this is, if you look, this is where this area uh, up to here is covered, around here is covered by the underbody. This is exposed and you can see um, these areas are, are rusting already. These uh, reinforced pinch welds here and here, you can see the reinforcing that the factory puts in place um, so that you can lift the car. And I'm using some slotted aluminum protectors uh, specifically to avoid bending this. What you see with a lot of cars is people will just jack on this uh, without a protector. They'll bend this over and they'll start rust almost right away. Um, so get yourself a set of slotted, even a set like a hockey puck with a slot in it is better. I have these aluminum uh, cups that have a slot cut in the middle. You'll see again over here, all kinds of rust. If we look up, so we can see that. You can see kind of how nasty that is back there. All these areas that are blasted. Um, so again, I've, all, I've hit these areas with the 300, sorry, with the 700 to uh, make sure that the seams get kind of uh, treated because uh, 700 is a high creep rate. You'll see rust here seam rust here. Now, this is the high voltage cable. It comes from the battery pack. 
that's an area that, you know, you want to, again, make sure you disconnect the 12 volt battery. You don't want to be spraying this necessarily. In fact, I wouldn't spray this. Um, and you want to kind of avoid it. Uh, even though with a 12 volt battery, there should be no high voltage in this. Still want to be careful and exercise some caution, obviously. Um, now I put some 300 on this case. Um, you want to be very careful about that, not to actually spray the connectors or spray into the connectors. But um, anybody who says you shouldn't, uh, you know, uh, put a product, again, the Noxidol is a water, it's a, it's a solvent free product. Uh, it doesn't cause any issue with seals. Um, so it's a pretty safe product to use on an EV. Um, you can see here, these, uh, this is part of the main sort of structure that goes under, that carries the battery. So you definitely want to run these with your uh, tools and spray product all the way through the bottom of this. The battery's actually, um, there's, a, there's a space and the battery's uh, behind this steel case. So again, coming up here to the subframe, this is all, this is all uh, normally protected. And you can see there's a fair bit of rust coming around here. It's a pretty important piece, this subframe uh, here, because it's obviously the, the main support structure for your suspension and your engine or your motor rather. So um, yeah, you wanna make sure you run all these. There's, you can see there's holes that you can get into and spray this, I'll coat this on the outside. I've sprayed all the inside again with the 700 and we'll hit it with the 300. Um, not so bad up here, but there is a, if you look straight up here, you can't really see it. There's a main, uh, probably crash support or chassis reinforcement. There's a bar that goes right in front of the engine. You wanna make sure you hit that. Um, so that's, uh, and I'll hit these spots too. You do want to, um, I'm gonna be doing a brake service on this. So I'm gonna actually have the, the pads and everything off. I'll clean these pads or clean the rotors with brake clean when I'm done. But it is important uh, if you're not gonna be doing that, you just wanna wrap them. I use like a shrink wrap, uh, even saran wrap. You can just wrap it around and protect those. And that's pretty much, um, that's pretty much it. Um, I've hit these drive shafts with zinc spray. Um, the reason I've done that is because on our other car, which is older, this, boot uh, had some rust underneath and the this uh, CV joint failed after about a hundred thousand kilometers because a little bit of rust got under the clamp the clamp got loose some water got in here and then took out the joint uh, in for the later model uh, leaves the EVs you can't find an aftermarket at least yet axle so you're basically stuck uh, paying some pretty high bucks in this case in Canada it's about 900 bucks for one of these you have to buy the whole axle not cool. Um, so preventative maintenance, I just hit these with a bit of zinc, uh, which is an, like a, a sacrificial uh, anti-corrosion paint. And uh, hopefully that will uh, help with this car. So I think that's about it. We've uh, looked at the members that you want to hit. Um, oh, and I should remember, let's just go here and cover one more thing. So lots of little channels. This looks like it's just um, you know, the metal on the outside. If you look a little more carefully, you find out that's actually a structural member and you can run and you should run tools through this and to treat it on the inside. You can see there's a, a kind of a seam right here. These are all areas that'll rust. This is another area of interest right here. This is where if you have leaves that are coming down on the top of the car, they end up making their way down and they'll sit right here. And this area will eventually rust out um, because the leaves really can't escape. So if you do pull your fender liner off, which by the way, isn't a big deal, you wanna kind of clean this out. I did go over the car. Um, actually, that's really important. That's a really important point. So we're gonna go over basically a little bit of prep. If you painted a few cars, and I have, uh, you'll know that prep is everything. And in the case of uh, corrosion treatments, it definitely helps um, in fact, probably a requirement that you take something like this wire brush and you uh, just go over any areas like here. I've hit all these points before I sprayed them, including up here. Um, get rid of the dirt, uh, hit it with the wire brush to get loose, uh, rid of anything that's uh, flaking. Uh, because obviously if you spray product over flaking paint or rust, it's just gonna flake off and there'll be nothing there. So this isn't magic. It, it does require at least uh, a reasonably uh, stable substrate. The Noxidol product does react with rust. And it's one of, the, one of the reasons I use it. So um, yeah, a little bit of prep is gonna be a good thing. Uh, and definitely even with the EV here, um, 
you want to take a spray wash and try to clean off as much as you can. I will mention that there's a quite a lot of gravel that you'll find in the um, under trays in particular. If we go outside here, let's take a little walk. This one, which sits at the back. And you'll see these are numbered. So this is the one that sits at the very back. Uh, it actually, the back of the car is actually uh, where my feet are. This area here gets a lot of gravel in it. And the other area is the panel that's right in front of it, which is uh, this one here, panel four. You can see the arrow pointing forward. This area here is was just full of sand and gravel. Um, so it's really important to um, obviously clean these out as best you can. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about these picking up dirt because they just pick it up as you go down the road. All right, so a few hours later, uh, we've now sprayed the black uh, Noxtool 300 um, pretty much everywhere. I won't go under a whole lot because it's a real mess under there, but you sort of get the idea here uh, what's going on. Um, again, it's just a pretty messy job. And uh, the idea is just take your time. Um, definitely use the different tools at your disposal. Um, and I would like to point out, we'll lower the car um, so we can look at a couple other fine points of doing this kind of work. Specifically, some uh, companies will go ahead and drill holes all over the place. You don't need to do that. Uh, this area, for example, there are access holes underneath with these plugs, just like this one right here. This particular plug, you can pull out and use that flexible tool to actually run and spray the doors. Um, and all four doors have one right here on this particular car. Um, another thing you'll see some, again, companies will drill holes here. Um, when you actually look under here, you can't go very far. It, you know, these are usually double layers of metal. So you can drill a hole, but you're not going far. A better idea is to access from underneath uh, with the drain holes that are there. Usually when a car is dipped, there's a bunch of different holes on the leaf. There's probably 10 different plugs underneath that you can access. And then this, you can pry up again using a plastic uh, pry tool, uh, a body tool. You can pop this up and actually access the sill through there. But it's really important when you're doing a car like this to get the access points underneath. and. Uh, spray uh, with your cavity tool front and back in all the different points. Uh, EVs will often have extra reinforcement and so they'll be like stops. It'll be blocked off. Uh, so you really do have to spend a little bit of time and probe and look. As far as the doors go, that takes care of it. Again, the sill over here. Um, I've actually done under the hood in this car, but that gives you an idea of the work that we've done. So we'll skip over and do a little final bit now uh, to conclude this piece. All right, so that was a busy day and uh, a dirty one, but uh, cleaned up. Uh, the car is pretty much done now. It's gonna sit there. Um, we have the uh, luxury, I suppose, of letting the car sit uh, ideally three to five days, um, three to four days anyway. If you do have to drive, you just want to avoid driving in uh, heavy rain or driving on the freeway for two hours because it'll just blow product off. It sets up, it doesn't dry so much as it sets up, but I wanted to point out the aerosol products, which I didn't use today, but this is the 300, this is the 700, that's the amber uh, clear running liquid. This is the product that won a three year test in Classic Car Magazine. Um, when you buy these products <clears throat> from Noxidol, they come with, a wand here that's, uh, uh, it's a 360 nozzle, just a little plastic thing that you can basically pop the top here off, pop this off, pop this on, and essentially uh, you've got an application tool that you can run into doors and that sort of thing. Um, now I have a hoist here and I have a cavity uh, gun, a dedicated set of equipment for doing this work. I have the luxury of a small shop and a hoist if you were doing this in your driveway, say on jack stands or just, uh, well, actually, yeah, on jack stands because you don't want to be under the car without them. But um, you could purchase the aerosols. They come with the application tool. You could run your doors and you could, you know, leave all the panels in place and just focus on the areas behind the tires because that is where 
the problems are typically the worst. Um, so focus on the doors, focus on the rocker panel, spend your time there and spray behind the wheels with the 300. That's a good part of the battle actually. Um, now there's some hidden areas around fenders and that sort of thing uh, where water drainage can be an issue. I've looked at quite a few different cars. They all have different issues. Um, typically a bad one, say on trucks, is the back of the cab where the corners are. Those are areas that are hard to access. You really have to spend some extra time to treat those areas. But with the Noxidol, uh, again, it's a product I've been very happy with um, and uh, really haven't had any kind of corrosion issues uh, since using it. And we do have the worst of winters here. So uh, there you go. If you uh, did find this useful, uh, like and subscribe to the channel would be much appreciated. I hope you did find the video useful today.